Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. I'd like to continue our discussion about gear trains and I love gear trains. They just look so slick, they do really cool things and they look way more complicated than they actually are. We remember that if we just remember what two gears have in common, we can understand everything that's happening. Please ignore the red dashes in the graph below. They're left over from an illustration I decided to take out for this video. To deal with gear trains, we first look at what's happening, say, with the first gear, gear A, and then we figure out what's happening with gear B, gear C, and then gear D. And if we understand that relationship, we can put a relationship between A and any one of the other gears, maybe going directly to D, and that's going to be our goal today. That said, let's figure out the relationship between just the velocities in this situation. So we know um, omega A, R A equals omega B, R B. So we have a relationship between the angular velocity of B and A. So angular velocity of B equals omega A, R A over R B. And we simply used we saw that the teeth were engaged, we know what the equations are, that stuff's pretty simple. Now the next thing that we can do is figure out what's the relationship in speed between B and C. Well, we know that. We know they share an axis, so we're looking here. Omega B equals omega C. And finally, we can figure out a relationship between C and D, and they share teeth, so we know omega D equals omega C, RC all over RD. That's just like what happened over here. So now that we've found the relationship between each gear and the next gear, let's combine them. So now we have um, our relationships between each of the gears. Let's combine them. And since we're not going to need this stuff anymore, let's go ahead and kill it. And let's run our calculations. We start off with our first one, omega A R A over R B equals omega B. Well, we don't want to know omega B. We want to use that to figure out omega C. Well, omega B and omega C are equal, but just to, just to be good about the stuff that we're doing, we'll rewrite the equation. Now, not in terms of omega B, but omega C. You can see we're kind of working our way down. And we don't want to know omega C. We want to know omega D. So we go over here to this equation right here. And if we look at that equation, we see omega C equals omega D RD over RC. All right, so we have that equation. We solve for omega C, we plug it right back in. We get omega A, all right, we keep the left-hand side the same. RB equals omega D RD over RC. And this way, we now have a relationship between omega A and omega D. And if we wanted to write this out, we'd simply have omega D equals omega A RA over RB, RC over RD. And here is our final equation. Let's tidy this up a little bit. And that's how we work with gear trains. We move from the front, we find a relationship between each one of the gears, and then we end by just moving along from A to D or wherever you need to go. Finally, one of the things that we asked for was the relationship between the power and the torque. Fortunately, in this case, you don't have to go through all this because it's really simple. We know that gears transfer power. So whatever power is happening at A is also happening at D. So the power at D equals the torque at D times the angular acceleration at D. And the power at D coincidentally equals the power at A. So we just need to solve for the torque and we have an easy solution. 